Texas Rail Fan 2008. Here's the delayed monthly signal collection video. Uh, most of it was due to constant rain and because of the rain, me not being able to do very much signal wise. So we'll just start off way down here. At our first cabinet, this is a safe train cabinet. In the top, we have the relays for the power on, the style B semaphore, a timer relay for the flasher right here in the corner, and then various relays to control this signal here, as well as the power supply in the bottom. Next, we have this signal. The two signals with targets and hoods on them are H2 style signals off of the SP from Houston, I believe. And then this one is off of the ATSF somewhere in California. Um, it's a style H signal. It's a lot more uncommon than an H2 and it's also older. Slightly different mechanism. An H2 mech will fit in an H, but it will not align properly as far as the uh, focusing of the light beam. Here's a Griswold cantilever that's been cut down and converted into just a standard signal. Stop on red signal sign, Harman Electronics lights, and a flat cap on top of the pole, and cross bucks, aluminum. Next is a style B semaphore with uh, mixed parts from, I believe, the SP Sunset route and the Siskiyou line through Oregon and Arizona. The mile plate is a five digit mile plate in uh, the shorter section where they reached over a thousand miles. Here's the mechanism. You can see the glass cupped motor, the air buffer and the chain and various gears as well as the slot coils and terminal board. It's inside of the case from a style S semaphore. So it has this access door on the side that with the style S mechanism in it would be used to access the terminal board because it was mounted on the side in the style S's. There's the builder's plate of the cabinet, not of the semaphore mechanism. The semaphore mechanism is actually older by probably, well, actually it's about the same age. Yeah, 1897. You can identify these older cases by the USNS text being a lot bigger than the newer cases. As well as, normally this plate is mounted on the inside, but you can see the four rivets where the plate is mounted on the inside. The spectacle is powder coated black, I believe. And then all the lenses are glass, original. And the arm is enamel coated steel. It has an Ad Lake lamp assembly. Next is this GRS cabinet that I'm just housing a couple timer relays in. There they are, thermal timer relays. There's the finial slash weatherhead. GRS logo is outlined in black. Next is the first of the three, what I like to call union cases. Produced by Union Switch and Signal, the Rock Island was a big user of them. In old pictures of the Rock Island, you might, might see these in the background in service. This has an NF style flasher relay in it, as well as a DN11 for a very simple crossing setup. Next is this GRS crossing with a Union Switch and Signal third generation teardrop bell, Griswold cat eye cross bucks, Union Switch and Signal lights and manifold and manifold cover, Union Switch and Signal two track sign, a Union Switch and Signal pole base, and a GRS cabinet with all original to what would have been in the cabinet relays. Here we have the interlocking relay that's connected to the track. Here we have the flasher relay and the XR relay. 
Down below we have lightning protectors and the terminal board. In the back we have where the batteries would have gone and where they still are. Battery. Uh, flat, this is the flasher relay for this TP5 signal that I'll cover in a second. And we have various transformers and stuff that are just on static display. As well as the power supply and an outlet that's being fed from the shop. Next is this signal, which is a conglomeration of parts. We have a union switch and signal TP5 with a Rock Island style snow hood. We have a shortened five and a half inch steel mast. A GRS cast aluminum mile plate, a GRS cast iron side mount arm, and a Chicago Railway Signal and Supply Company color light signal, as well as a un union switch and signal base and base cover. Here's the back of the Chicago. In the back of the TP5, you can see the spider assembly that holds the three individual lamp units closed. Next, we have a Dwarf H2, also off of the SP, most likely in California. Next, we have a Union Switch and Signal cabinet with a GRS pole and a GRS style D1 or a Sentinel, if you want to call it that. This is the successor to the common style D signal, which is just a standard cast iron and cast aluminum inline signal that was produced by GRS for many years. Inside we have various relays. We have a flasher relay right here. We have a code receiving P4 relay. And we have a DN11 and a DP25 for uh, polar track circuit setups. And then we have another, uh, let's see, GRS type K slow drop and a GRS type K polar relay also for polar track circuits. The relay is pulsing out 75 code right now. This would be hooked and will eventually in the future be hooked to a decoding transformer circuit that would then pick up different relays based on how fast the relay was ticking. In a second here you'll see it upgrade to 180 pulses per minute. You will also hear some of the other polar relays change. There we go. That is 180 on pulses per minute. It's uh, 360, I believe, state changes per minute. Next, we have a general railway signal style G signal off of the Mopac. It's on a shortened aluminum mass with an aluminum, cast aluminum. GRS model plate in a safe train cast aluminum base. The signal itself is cast iron. Next we have another conglomeration of signals. On the bottom we have a union switch and signal H2 with a smaller banner on it off of the ATSF. Here we have an HC33 marker and traditional SA searchlight off of the New York Central or Conrail. And then above we have a, a little bit older SA searchlight off of the Denver and Rio Grande Western with a larger target on it as well as a pole top mount as opposed to the side mount like this one has. Next is the Type D I was referring to. This is the cast aluminum version. Go around the back here. Next, we have a Union Switch and Signal TP5, another TP5, this time with the more traditional three individual targets, uh, three individual visors and target, a little bit bigger target also. It's complete with the platformless ladder, as well as a Union Switch and Signal base. Now, this is interesting because this pole is the exact pole that was used to hold up DW style wigwags that were also produced by Union Switch and Signal. So I believe that this pole was shortened just a tad and reused for this signal. 
because this came from the cotton belt, I believe. They were known to reuse stuff. Has another union cabinet on it with a side mount here. And also on the DW wigwags, there's a cabinet right there on the pole, just like how it is here. So this very well could have held a wigwag at one time. Inside the cabinet, we see the home and light out relays for this light. So the home relay switches between red and green, and this switches between the two greens. Instead of red, yellow, green, it's red, green, green, because this was an interlocking signal. So it was either stop or go, there was no approach. Next we have a Chicago, another Chicago signal. This one has two burnt out bulbs. I need to replace them. Only the yellow bulb is showing, which I believe will be, yeah, there we go. And then we have a union bell. This is a first gen teardrop bell produced by union switch and signal. Over here we have a complete general railway signal company crossing complete with a mini bell produced by WRS, and then the lights in the base are General Railway Signal Company. They're double-sided, but I have the bulbs pulled out of the backlights because I want to save power. And there's the mini bell. Next up, we have a union switch and signal, another union cabinet, I should say. This houses two vane relays that are eventually going to be wired up and used to control another signal I'll be putting up soon. I just got the wood put in this one. All original wood also. Next up we have this signal, which is mostly union switch and signal besides the lights in the terminal box that's on the back. The lights are General Railway Signal Company, but they have a Modern Industries light manifold on them. The stop light is produced by Union Switch and Signal. There's a second generation teardrop bell on the top. The base is Union Switch and Signal. And there's a Rayco terminal box on the back. Next, we have this cable post made by Union Switch and Signal very small cabinet. I've yet to put anything in it. And then here we have another union switch and signal crossing that's going to be put up soon. It has a Western Railroad Supply Company bell on it. Then here we have a pedestrian gated crossing that's going to be put up soon with a union switch and signal base. And then here we have a what's going to be a, a full-size gated crossing. So these will be going up shortly. Once we get that pole up, then we can put the two gate mechanisms on them. So we'll go ahead and head into the bungalow where all the action's happening. Going all the way back, we have the power supply board with two rail chargers that are charging. This one's charging the battery for the phase motion detector, which controls the crossings out there. This one is actually powering all the lights and everything and the bells on the crossing whenever they're on. There's the flasher relay or the EOR. There's the XR relay, the XGP relay, and the DN19 XGC relay. GP stands for gate position. GC stands for gate control. Uh, I would imagine something oscillating relay is what EOR stands for. Over on this side, we have all the relays that are actually active controlling the bungalow. Right here are all the interlocking relays. Right from here down and from this relay down are all interlocking relays as well as these up here. Um, these control the actual interlocking that is installed in this bungalow. Here we have the home and distant relays for all the signals outside. There are many timer circuits and such added onto these that make a lot more stuff happen than just what these two relays control. Although you can see they're pretty full, both of them are. And I have repeaters of those relays down here that are also pretty full. Up here we have various other relays. This is all configured in an automatic block signal setup. So 
basically this is one set this is one signal down from that this is one signal down from this one and so on here's the 180 rate code transmitter and the 75 rate code transmitter is just a flasher relay from a vehicle i need to get an actual code transmitter such as this one here's a code responsive relay it's a fast acting polar relay meant to be hooked to the track it's 0.25 ohms um, this would be used in a coded track situation so instead of having pole lines running down the track carrying signals to for uh, different signal locations to talk to each other they would send pulses down the track at various speeds here we have another dx13 interlocking relay that is believed to have come off of the frisco it has a handle on it. This is a slightly older relay. Last inspection date was 1971, but it's much older than that. Here's a FL28 flasher relay made by Wabco. This uses CTC style relays to flash. And there's the older FN27 flasher relay. I apologize for the lack of light back here. As well as various other relays. Here is the local control stand for the interlocking. So you turn the key to get a signal to go right bound, which is uh, east bound, or 2L to go west bound. So if I click, so 2R is lit right now, which means there's a signal line east bound, and that's the style B. So if I click 2L, the style B will go dark, and then in about a minute and a half, the TP5 will clear. There we go. So now that we have a westbound movement requested for the interlocking, the time relay west is going to start counting down. There's the southbound time relay, the eastbound time relay, and the northbound time relay. Here's the approach relays for north, east, south, and west, and the signal clear relays for north, east south and west right here are the northbound and southbound emergency release buttons this is the westbound and eastbound emergency release buttons that's the maintenance of way work equipment um relay which when it is dropped that means that the key and there's a key switch in this box that is turned and when that key is turned it drops all signals within interlocking limits to stop essentially providing complete protection for maintenance of way equipment to get on the track there's also another emergency release box out here this controls the northbound and southbound movements normally there would be two or there would be one with four buttons in it for um, movements in all directions i only have one though so i only put one on the bungalow there we go, the TP5 just cleared. You can see now both the light out relay is picked up, which is wired in series with the green lamp, and the home relay is picked up, which switches between red and green. When it's picked up, it's green. When it's dropped, it's red. It's fail safe. Uh, the Type D is not hooked up yet. And you can see now over here, that the style B has dropped to the stop position. And the arm is lowered down. So when current is applied to the motor, it also applies, or when voltage is applied to the motor, it also applies it to the slot coils, which essentially lock this locking dog in place so that it allows a hook on the chain to hook it and raise it up which pushes this rod up, which makes the spectacle and blade lower, shining the green lens in front of the lamp instead of the red lens. That's how a style B semaphore works, or basically any semaphore for that matter. There we go, so I'll line a northbound movement now. 
So you can see these lamps light up whenever the opposing tracks signals are set to stop. So if there's a northbound or southbound signal that's set to clear, these will be lit. But if there, say for instance, is an eastbound signal cleared, these will be showing stop. So they only light up if there is confirmed a red signal on all of the opposing tracks. Here's the northbound time relay. It's kind of a unique one. It uses a pendulum and a ratcheting mechanism. It is a plugboard style relay. This is another more traditional time of relay, a DT10, which essentially uses a flashing mechanism, just like an FN16 would, that moves a ratcheting mechanism. And then these are often called coffee grinders because they sound like a coffee grinder when they're running. These just simply use a motor with a gear ratio to move a disc which has a contact on it. And eventually it moves down and touches another contact down there. And you can push this in after you take out this little locking bar and push it in, which is the disc is spring loaded. So you can push it in and adjust it to make the time longer or shorter. You can see this one's total time is eight minutes, and uh, basically it's divided up into eight segments, and each segment is one minute. Same thing here. This one is 16 minutes. Each segment is two minutes long, and so forth. I've seen these all the way up to 30-minute timers. And that's about it. This has been the most recent as of... June of 2024 monthly signal collection update. This is Texas Railfine 2008. Bye.